What is going on everybody? My name is Nico and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Uh, now, I know I just recently made a tips and tricks video and this tips and tricks video is different from that one. That one is for people that want to get into Pokemon VGC. The people that have never played before and want to kind of get an understanding before they start getting into it. This is more for people that already have teams and are already trying to, you know, play on the ladder. This is just some additional tips and tricks that I have learned recently that really helped me win more games while playing Pokemon. Because this game is incredibly frustrating and there's a lot to it. And there's just some weird things that you get in your head that really can affect how you play the game and whether or not it's actually good or not. So I've got a list of stuff here that I'm going to talk about. In this video to hopefully help you guys win some more pokemon games. but if this is your first time here on the channel make sure you are subscribed for more pokemon sword and shield and vgc content in the future let's get into it so i think the first tip i can give is just something very very obvious and that's just practice. The more you play the game, the more you are going to understand about the game and the better you are going to get. I have played a whole lot more this season versus last season because last season I just got back into it. And this season I'm really trying to just better myself as a player. So I've been playing a ton, whether it be in showdown or in the actual game. And the thing about playing in game, if you're practicing in game, is you can still play rank. Don't worry about your rank. Like if you want to hit master ball and that's your goal because you want the rewards, that's fine do that but don't worry so much about your rank that it affects how you play like for example i'm constantly decreasing in rank because i just don't have a lot of time to play ranked so when i hop back on i'm really really low based on what i was when i got off the game so just understanding that you know if you don't have a lot of time you're going to de-rank a lot just because other people are playing more than you this isn't something to really be that upset about just enjoy the game and practice you know that's the thing like that is the biggest thing is just learning this game and practicing as much as possible. The next thing I can tell you is learn the metagame. That is super, super important is understanding what you're going to see most commonly because there are, you know, it's a best of one on the ladder. So you're going to see a lot of like cheese teams that just aren't very popular and don't work in a, like a best of three scenario. So you're going to see a lot of weird stuff, but it's important to learn about the Pokemon you're going to see the most because these Pokemon are going to just be repeating all the time. Like Incineroar is in almost every freaking team ever. Incineroar is just super popular. So I'm over here on po uh, Picolytics and all these uh, links will be in the description below if you guys want to use these resources. But I'm on Picolytics and this shows all of the Pokemon uses, what they're ranked and everything like that. And it shows move sets. Uh, it shows EV spreads. It shows what items are commonly used. So when you're playing and you're getting into battling and maybe you don't know the meta that well, use this resource to look and see what movesets they have. So that way you can predict play, see what items the Pokemon might be carrying. Because for example, if you're facing something like a Metagross who most commonly carries a weakness policy, you're not going to want to activate that weakness policy. So you want to play around that and things of that nature. So this is just a really helpful tool, not only for being able to learn the metagame and understand, you know, what you could see in a battle with your opponent using, but it can also help you build teams along the way and see what's good and what synergizes well together. It shows teammates for certain Pokemon. So it's just a really, really helpful resource. Next up, we have predicting your opponent. I kind of covered this a little bit when we were talking about the Picolytics thing. And this is kind of like a toss up kind of thing. You can't always know what your opponent is going to do, whether it be rotate a Pokemon or use protect or things of that nature. So you really got to think about what the best move you can do is. So for example, if you're using Incineroar and they have a water type of some nature like uh, Kyogre's out and you have Lapras in the back with water absorbed, you're going to predict that they're going to use either Origin Pulse or Water Spout and you're going to switch your Lapras in which will then eat the hit. It takes zero damage from those because it has Water Absorb and you save your Incineroar. So you just have to think about what your opponent could possibly do that turn and think for your best play around it. And that's why I say understanding the metagame is super important 
because without understanding the metagame and what the possible moves are on certain Pokemon, you're not going to be able to make predictions as effectively. So if I didn't know the meta, I wouldn't know that, you know, Kyogre constantly carries Water Spout or Origin Pulse or both. So, you know, that's things you got to learn and that's going to make you a better player the more you understand and the more movesets you know. My next tip is just slow down slow down your play this is something that really affected me this uh series at the start of series eight i wanted to rush back to master ball as quickly as possible and it's just it didn't go well for me i was making stupid plays and not thinking through and i was just getting obliterated and it was a really tough time getting back to master ball i am back now but uh because i was rushing my play i was making silly mistakes and stuff that could have been avoided and i would have won more games had i just slowed down and thought about what i was doing uh what goes into this is don't always like rush into picking a super effective attack uh that's a big thing is i had this in my head is like oh you see it says super effective so you use it on that pokemon a lot of the times they're going to rotate and that move is either going to be null and void or they're going to take minimal damage from that attack uh because they read into that so instead of rushing into a super effective attack think about okay what can they you know rotate into what can i do that might change and avoid you know me making a silly play and wasting a turn maybe i'll attack into the other slot or maybe i'll dynamax and start you know using max moves to set up either speed buffs or defenses and things of that nature so really slow down your play and think through every turn it's going to help you out a lot i promise you next up is don't be afraid to rotate i've talked about rotating a lot in this video and this is something i i think this is like for a lot of people really obvious but for me i don't know why in my brain for the longest time playing vgc when especially when i started i did not ever freaking rotate like if i didn't think i could set up my thing i was just like i just lost this one like it's just is what it is because like my first team that I took into ranked play was a Greedent Oranguru team based off of A Drive's uh, Greedent combo with Oranguru, where you set Belly Drum and then you use Instruct and it's under Trick Room. It's a really fun thing to do. However, because I never rotated, if I couldn't get the Belly Drum and the Trick Room off, I was just like, oh, well, I think I've lost this game and I wouldn't rotate those two Pokemon. So I, I don't I don't know why in my head that's how it is but rotating is so essential like i said earlier you know if you're predicting attacks and you're trying to save incineroar from a kyogre swapping in a lapras is going to make all that damage null and void on that slot and you're going to save your incineroar for another time so rotating is very very key so if you're anything like me and you're stubborn and it's just in your head that you know this was the lead that you wanted it's not going your way rotate like i said it's something that should be really obvious and i'm sure a lot of people sitting and going what an idiot you know not rotating but it was a thing for me for the longest time and now that i you know rotate all the time it's really really like my play has gotten significantly better and there's been games where i just simply outplay people by rotating so it's really important and i wanted to cover it regardless of you know how obvious it might be next up understanding your weaknesses now this isn't like type weaknesses you know like lapras is weak to electric types and grass types don't no that's not what we're talking about here i'm talking about understanding where you're lacking whether it be you know rotations understanding the metagame uh not understanding a format that well like for example this is my first game where i've played vgc as a result of this I have no experience with the current format which allows the use of one restricted legendary pokemon so that's pokemon like kyogre groudon dialga palkia giratina uh yveltal uh xerneas things like that i have no prior knowledge of how these pokemon worked in previous games so right now series 8 is very difficult for me because i have to now learn what those pokemon do how people are using them and how they are going to be used in the teams that they are being brought in so right now this is a huge learning thing for me and that is one of my weaknesses i need to learn more about these pokemon so that i can win more games and that's just the thing you just need to understand where your weaknesses are and why you're losing so that way you can improve upon those things excuse me you can improve upon those things and then obviously win more games so if it is rotations like i said earlier that was a weakness for me 
I didn't rotate and now I rotate and that weakness has been solved and I win a lot more games. Now it's like I need to understand the restricted Pokemon. I need to understand what, what these legendaries do. So now that is what I need to do. That is my weakness and that is what I need to, you know, fix and work on and, you know, learn up on basically. I, like I spent a lot of time playing Showdown, playing on Picolytics and looking around and seeing what these Pokemon do. I brought us back to Pokemon Showdown for the last tip that I have, and that is don't be afraid to fix teams, make changes to your teams. Uh, I, I, for one, am someone that is very stubborn and I like to use certain stuff. So for the longest time, I would leave teams as they are and I would just like scrap an entire team if I wasn't winning enough with it or if I didn't think it was working well enough. I would just scrap the whole team be like well this doesn't work that's not the case okay the more i've played the more i'm like okay i was just an idiot i was a new player i didn't understand so for example this is the kyogre team that i posted a rental code for in a video breaking down the team this team is good don't get me wrong this team i've won so many games with uh it, it's a good team but it can be better it, it can be better and that is something i realized the more i used this team uh, for example, the Pokemon that I ended up taking out of this team recently and will be posting, you know, more videos and stuff on uh, regarding the change is Whimsicott. Whimsicott has been removed from this team. It's not because I didn't like what Whimsicott did for the team. It's just because there was a Pokemon that could do what Whimsicott did, but actually improve upon the team even further. So, for example, I run Whimsicott in this team because Tailwind is awesome for Kyogre, you know, using water spout and things like that and it makes ludicolo with the swift swim even freaking faster so i really like tailwind i brought that helping hand is super nice for really powerful water spouts as well as taunt you know to shut down any trick rooms things like that and moon blast now i do have metagross and incineroar which are fairly slow pokemon so i can handle my own under a trick room situation so i realized i really didn't necessarily need the taunt so I know that Tornadus is super freaking popular with a Kyogre. It's just, it, they, they're like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together, okay? So, I started working on a Tornadus. I wanted to know how I could bring this into my team, and how it would synergize with my team more effectively than a Whimsicott would. And I realized that Tornadus can learn Rain Dance. This is huge, not only because, you know, the main reason you use Kyogre is drizzle drizzle super cool it's a rain based pokemon uh but you know sometimes you face something like a tyranitar or a torkoal that is slower than your kyogre you're going to then lose the terrain battle you're going to set your rain and then immediately after they're going to set either you know if it's torkoal they're going to set their uh sun or if it's tyranitar they're going to set their sand stream so with Tornadus having Rain Dance, I'm able to reset the rain so it benefits me and shuts down a lot of fire type Pokemon. Or, alternatively, if I don't think Kyogre's a good lead, but Ludicolo is, I'm able to lead Ludicolo Tornadus, and then instead of setting Tailwind turn one, set Rain Dance, make Ludicolo really fast, and then knock out a Pokemon turn one. So, this uh, change to this team really helped me uh, find another way to use Ludicolo more effectively. And it just was all around made this team much more solid. So that's why I say don't be afraid to change your team because despite something working, something could work even better once you, you know mess around with some stuff, maybe tweak some stats. So it's really important to understand that and actually be able to go in and realize, you know, this is a weakness in my team. I could go and change it or this could something could work better here in my team. Don't be super stubborn in the fact that you could just leave a Pokemon in there that doesn't quite get you the results that you're looking for. And that was the case with Whimsicott. And then finally, I say this in every one of my Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, tips and tricks videos, is just have fun. That's the whole point of this game, whether it be in team building or in game, have fun, enjoy yourself. That's the point. And by doing that, you're not going to get tilted. You're not going to get upset or frustrated. I mean, this game is very frustrating. It's going to happen. I'm not going to say that I've never been frustrated playing Pokemon. But if you just, you know, have fun with it, instead of worrying about your rank or doing all these other things, 
it's just going to be a much better time and you're going to play the game a lot more so that is going to be it for this video guys let me know in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks that i did not cover here in this video if you found the video entertaining and helpful be sure you leave a like and smash the subscribe button for more videos like this in the future uh check out the discord people over there playing pokemon check out uh my twitch channel where i play all the time uh check out my tiktok and check out all my other social medias where uh, you can keep up with me, this channel, the stream, or anything like that. But, like I said, that is it for this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.